One of the things I miss while flying is getting up-to-date weather on my ForeFlight navigation screen. I was aware that there were boxes you could buy for six to eight hundred dollars that would provide the weather while in flight, but I was sure hoping there was a less expensive way to do this. In the next three minutes, I'm going to demonstrate how you can build a device using readily available components that cost about a hundred dollars that will provide you with live weather and traffic to your aircraft using one of the popular navigation panels. I'm going to demonstrate it on ForeFlight. Of course you can purchase a commercially available receiver costing from $600 on up but what makes this a really unique kit that you can build is that there are only two components you need to purchase the computer and the radio. The software which was written by Christopher Young is what makes these components work. Christopher Young is the one who should get full credit for making this a viable tool that you can put in your aircraft and it truly competes with the commercially available units. Simply visit our website at homebuilthelp.com and click on the link for Stratix. This will point you to a complete set of instructions which will show you which parts you need to order from amazon.com and how to assemble the components which we are about to demonstrate now. The computer you order will look like this when it arrives. This is actually a very popular computer in the hobbyist world, the Raspberry Pi 2, as it's called. Here is the computer circuit board itself. And here are the components that come with the computer kit. In the upper left is the micro SD card. This you will use to transfer software to your computer. To the right of it is the Wi-Fi USB component. This plugs into one of the USB ports in this little computer and provides the Wi-Fi signal that will communicate with your tablet. And to the right of that are two little heat sinks that attach with adhesive tape to the chips on the circuit board. We won't even use the cable below. The radio kit you order will arrive looking like this. We have an antenna, the antenna coax and connector, the radio itself, the blue stick, and a remote control. We will throw away the remote control. We don't use that. The computer controls the radio. The radio itself is a USB device, so we will install it into our little computer by simply plugging it in to the USB port on the computer. Reading the directions, we see that we need to install some software onto the micro SD card. So we will use our laptop computer or other computer that will accept a card like this. The little card will fit inside the big card. And basically we're going to download a file and download a utility and run the utility which will install that file properly onto the little card. It's actually a very simple process if we simply follow the directions. Once the software is loaded onto the micro card, we can remove it from the big card and then we will install it into our little computer. Here's our computer and I'm going to install our little SD card right into the slot push and we are done our SD card is on the bottom of the board I'm going to turn the board around and here are four USB ports and here's the radio 
I'm going to insert the radio into any one of the ports. I'm going to choose this one just because it physically is going to make more sense. I'm done with that. Next, here is the Wi-Fi component. This little part here. It's also USB. And I'm going to insert that into another one of the S USB ports. I'll put it into this one here and just push it in. And we're just about done. So we have the radio in one port and the Wi-Fi transmitter in another port. Last, over here is the power connection. We're simply going to use a cable and that will plug into here like that and you probably recognize this this is where it's going to get its power now I ordered an optional battery pack so I could keep this whole thing portable you really don't need the battery pack as long as you have a place to plug this in in the aircraft it's nice to keep the whole thing portable so I've got a battery pack that I will attach to the bottom. Now this can all fit into a plastic box that was supplied with the kit. Here's the plastic box that was supplied with the kit. Very simple. It comes in two halves and we simply install this, put it on top. I'm going to basically tape it all up and that will make a secure way to handle the computer so that you're not touching the parts inside. And I'll assemble this properly off camera, if you don't mind. That's better. We are actually finished now assembling this receiver. The computer is now resting on top of my battery pack. Note the antenna is plugged into the side of the radio. And our last task is to simply package this up using Velcro or tie wraps to hold everything together. Here is the completed receiver. I have the receiver tie wrapped to the battery pack below it. You notice it is powered on. You can see the blinking lights of the computer. And I have the antenna velcroed to the top of the battery pack. This way, the entire unit is portable and I can simply place it wherever I want to. The only way I have of powering it on and off is by inserting the USB plug from the computer into the battery pack. I just pull that out when I want to turn it off and plug it in when I want to power it on. On the bottom of the battery pack I have some more Velcro and that allows me to set it in a predetermined place on my aircraft dash and not have it flop around. It is possible to design a very nice case and give it a professional look. These are available out there in the internet world. Here's my panel and when I want to go flying I simply place the unit on top of my glare shield and that's that. I happen to have some carpet type material on top here so the Velcro sticks very nicely and it will not move. And that's all I have to do. The antenna is simply positioned so that it can pick up a signal and it has a very short distance to transmit the Wi-Fi to the ForeFlight, in this case on my iPad. So there is no connection between the unit and the iPad. I can place this anywhere in the plane. That's convenient. I have powered up my ForeFlight program and I really don't need to do anything else. My ForeFlight program is set up so it will automatically pick up the Wi-Fi signal. 
so I really don't have to make any changes. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner, right below the time, and that's the time of the last update for weather, it says free flight, zero towers. Now as you fly, the zero will change to another number, one, two, three, four, etc., as it actually picks up the towers that are transmitting the ADSB signal to the receiver and the receiver transmits it via Wi-Fi to the four flight program. So as we're flying we get all of our weather overlays, we get our METARs and forecasts and winds and all the other things we're expecting to get in the four flight program updated from the FAA's free weather broadcasted by towers to our new receiver and into the foreflight. And it's just that easy. There's nothing else you have to do while flying. This may be a little difficult to see, but this is an example of what traffic looks like on the foreflight display. Those green arrows are other aircraft that are being tracked with their direction and tail number. This information is being picked up along with the weather through the ADSB receiver, which you just built. And just a quick wrap up here because I've run out of my allotted time. Don't get too hung up on watching traffic. It's more of a novelty, in my opinion, at this time because most of the aircraft out there do not have the sophisticated ADSB transponders that will allow you to see them so it can be very misleading to see a couple of aircraft on your screen and the one that hits you of course doesn't uh, have any of this equipment so you won't see them. Also note that this project had no dip switches to set, no software options to set, no soldering. We just plugged things in, turned it on, and it was up and running. It also works with other navigational display packages other than ForeFlight. All of these details and more are located at the directions, which you can find on that link at homebuilthelp.com.